Tara from Maumel, open enrollment start started for my job last week. We have an HSA option for the first time. Should I lump sum fund it or DCA? Thanks, love the show. Let's talk about real quick what an HSA, health savings account. We've talked about that not too uh, terribly long ago and what that is, but basically just for the listeners to get a quick definition of that, it is, as the name implies, for health care costs, out-of-pocket health care costs. So what an employer allows you to do in many cases, if you are in a high-deductible health insurance plan, you can contribute pre-tax dollars, just like to the 401k, except it's going to the HSA. It has contribution limits, and we won't, we won't get into all of that right now, but there are contribution limits. But you can put that in, and then you can withdraw it tax-free if it is used for eligible health care cost. So there's components in here that I always go to, Janet, when I first start talking about HSAs with mm-hmm. clients is when are you going to – I mean, it's the same thing as retirement, right? When are yeah. you going to need those dollars? Because if you're doing this because you have known – uh, health care costs uh, and your health's not good and you have ongoing expenses that you're going to use those for, then you don't really want to invest it. Mm-hmm. You want it to stay in cash. And in that case, the answer to Tara's question really wouldn't matter. Where you, well, it would matter. You would want to just go ahead and lump sum fund it because DCAing is not an advantage to you if you're not right. investing the dollars. But if you're trying to grow uh, your account over time to prepare for health care costs in retirement, then I think DCA might be, a, and that's, and we should say what that stands I, I was for. Just go right about, ahead. I was just about to go there. <laughs> yes. So um, DCA is dollar cost averaging, and it's it's the most ridiculously named concept <laughs> in our industry because it doesn't tell you at all what it means. Uh-uh. Um, so let me just kind of walk through the concept. Um, this will this will take us back to the old days here at Gen Wealth, where um, we actually came up with uh, this story. We were explaining this. Uh, to Tommy on 103.7 The Buzz just to go, hey, here's the concept. And he loved it so much that we kind of made a big deal out of it and kept it all these years. So here's the deal. If you were buying, let's say, cows instead of shares in a mutual fund, let's say that you're buying cows and your whole purpose is to populate the field. Remember that. Your purpose is to populate the field. Okay. So you have $100. We found some inexpensive cows, by the way, because it makes for really easy math so we found we've got a hundred dollars and we've gone to buy cows and we find out the first month that we go that they are ten dollars a head so with our hundred dollars scott we get ten cows so we put ten cows out in our field and Mm -hmm. we go the next month and we're going to add another hundred dollars well this time we find out that they are five dollars a head so at five dollars we get 20 cows. This is great because now we get more cows. And remember, our purpose was to populate the field. The third month we go and they're $2 a head. This is fabulous news. So we get 50 cows with our $100. This is great. That's cheaper than a quarter pounder by these days, by the way. <laughs> yes. But anyway, the math still works. The concept is still true. So let's pause for a moment in our example. We're now three months in to this example And we've invested $300, and we have 80 cows, because we got 10, then 20, then 50. So we have 80 cows. Those 80 cows are all valued at $2 a piece. So we've put in $300, and we only have a value of 160. This is where people hit the panic button, frankly. But if we're not planning to use this, and I know this is about HSA, but the same concept applies to your retirement. If you're not planning to use it three months in, leave it alone and let's keep buying cows because the purpose was what to populate the field so let's go a couple of more months a hundred dollars the next month they're back to five dollars a head we get another 20 cows the following month a hundred dollars they're back to ten dollars a head we get 10 cows now this is what we would call a flat market in this in this five month period of time we've gone from 10 to 5 to 2 back to 5 to 10. people say you can't make money in a flat market but What happens now is we have 110 cows over this five-month period. They're valued at $10 a piece, so that's an $1,100 value, and we've only invested $500. Now, dollar cost averaging is not going to guarantee a gain. It's not going to protect you against a loss, but what I want you to understand is the concept that when the price is higher, you get fewer cows or shares of your investment, 
and when the price is lower you get more so the concept is that over time that's going to change the average cost that you're paying for whatever it is that you're investing in so in most cases if this is going to be a long-term investment you don't need it short term we would encourage dollar cost averaging and when you said a hundred dollar cow i thought that's three ribeyes yeah it's not a whole cow <laughs> that's true that's but, absolutely true and this may go without saying for tara because she's if she's thinking about this she must think that she can handle it but the thing i think about too when you're determining whether you're going to lump sum fund it or put mm -hmm. in over a periodic period of time i i, I wonder well that's got to come out of your check so you know can you pay your bills <laughs> you know yeah. i mean if or, you're going to put a, out of your emergency fund or yeah. we you know where is right. this you know if if you're using that here from your check then what are you what are you using right. otherwise yeah. yeah so yeah. i think that that would be the determining factor too if you could even tolerate do or what mm -hmm. what choices would you have to make to make that lump sum uh, right. contribution into and the maybe HSA. Maybe it's coming from a bonus, and that might, might be a different conversation. Right. So I hope that helped, uh, Tara. But again, I think that depends on the usages. If you can think about when you're going to use it, lump sum's fine. If you're going to keep it safe and need some of it in the near term, a dollar cost averaging might be a good strategy for uh, dollars you're going to invest and not plan to use until retirement. And I do love the HSA. I, I think it's a great opportunity for uh, retirees to have – money in uh, in a tax-free withdrawal account that they're going to need for health care in retirement because health care costs are one of the biggest costs they're going to have uh, in their retirement blew right through that final bell so i hope i didn't <laughs> hope i didn't make you rush no you're good you're good